Hi LEGO fans, I've been getting quite a few requests to review sets recently. This one was requested by Kenneth Lowry and Dylan Chang. Thanks for the suggestion guys. Yes, today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 70610, the Flying Jelly Sub from the Ninjago movie. I'm determined to collect and review every single set from the Ninjago movie, and I've actually had this for some time. It's been on my shelf awaiting build for about six weeks. This is one of the smaller Ninjago movie sets with 341 pieces, but does include an impressive four minifigures. We've got Jay, Takuma, Hammerhead, and Jelly. We've seen Hammerhead and Jelly in other sets. Takuma seems to be the only exclusive minifigure in this set, and while I don't remember him from the Ninjago movie, I'm sure he was running around in the background somewhere. I do remember the Flying Jelly Sub, and we saw swarms of these in the movie. As well as the four minifigures and the Flying Jelly Sub, we get a boat that apparently does not float. Turning our attention to the back of the box, we get more of an idea of what the set is meant to do. The boat is a traditional Japanese style, and it's great to see the ever-forgiving Takuma helping Jelly out of the water. Jay, on the other hand, is being a lot less charitable. The flying Jelly Sub looks really cool. I really like the dome on top and the translucent orange chains that hang underneath as tentacles. In terms of functionality, it's got articulated arms that can spin around, a removable dome so the Shark Army pilot can get inside, and we've got a couple of flick missiles, which honestly aren't the best weapons LEGO produce. So this is a very cool looking set and I'm way overdue reviewing it. So let's get this thing open and see what we've got inside. Here's everything I found inside the box. We've got three numbered bags of LEGO, Two instruction manuals, one which opens from the left and another one which opens from the top. That awesome exclusive dome piece and a mercifully teeny tiny sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build the flying jelly sub and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. And here's a completed build. This took a little over one hour to put together, and for quite an inexpensive set, it actually feels like we've got a lot of stuff here. It also turns out that Hammerhead and Jelly are exclusives to this set, but in a kind of changing heads and body parts kind of way. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Overall, this set looks like good value for money, with four minifigures, a traditional Japanese boat, and this very cool Jelly sub, all for around 30 US dollars, but you can probably find it discounted by now. As always, I'm gonna give this set and the minifigures a comprehensive review. And we're going to start out with the boat and Takuma. This is a good looking little boat and has the perfect balance between oriental detail and a good strong build that you can play with. That 2x8 base plate on the bottom really helps with the structural integrity. And there's some really nice decorative features above the waterline. Takuma is most likely using his boat for trading which would explain those three buckets or pails which would be very useful for transporting goods. There are decorative side rails and an overhead rail which can be used for hanging lanterns 
lanterns, or maybe for other goods such as dried fish. With Takuma out of the boat, you can see the barrel-shaped cabin at the back. I'm not too familiar with traditional Japanese boats, so I'm not sure whether this is a storage area, a cabin for Takuma to hang out in, or if it's actually the engine for the boat. There's no obvious sign of a propeller at the back of the boat, but there is a little chimney on top of the cabin, and that makes me think this might be living quarters, and that could be some place for Takuma to cook. Overall, this is a really nice little build, and I wonder whether we'll see more craft like this when the rumoured Ninjago docks, the follow-up set to Ninjago City, comes out later this year. Moving on to the main event, this is the Flying Jelly Sub. This is an awesome looking ship and a deceptively intricate build. Flying Jelly Sub stands over 8 inches high and for comparison here's a minifigure. One of my favourite features of the Flying Jelly Sub are those tentacles. These are made of transparent orange chains and tipped with yellow fangs. Each one is attached to a central point beneath the body and as you can imagine these tend to get tangled up quite easily. Each one of those eight legs snaps onto a central point beneath the body and there's a further point of articulation further down the leg which means you can lift some of the legs off the ground if you're feeling really really brave. The legs rotate independently of the body which has the interesting side effect of winding up the tentacles. Moving up to the Flying Jelly Sub's cockpit, we've got this awesome pair of translucent orange lights which look just like eyes. LEGO designers often use very innovative build techniques and you may recognise those two revolver elements used to attach the eyes to the Jelly Sub. There are also functional and non-functional weapons on either side of the cockpit. On the left hand we've got these non-firing harpoon guns and these are mounted on a ball joint so you can target your enemies. On the other side, also mounted on a ball joint, we've got a pair of flick missiles. With the possible exception of the net shooter, these are probably the least effective weapons LEGO make. Allow me to demonstrate. Those just don't go very far at all. Behind the cockpit you'll find two directional engines and two tanks which look like they might contain something dangerous, although that is unclear. The labels on the tanks do seem to indicate something nasty is inside and the description of the set on LEGO's website refers to toxic tentacles. So maybe those tanks contain toxins to flow through the tentacles. Who knows? Each engine has a very cool spinning propeller element and there's some sticker detail on the side which says Jelly Mini Sub. The cockpit is enclosed by this very cool hemispherical transparent element which is exclusive to the Flying Jelly Sub. This opens up from the rear, exposing the minifigure seating position. Inside we've got a pair of control levers, a computer screen, a mug of coffee and the big red button of doom. There's also a seating position with yellow seat back and decorative yellow horns. It's a little bit tricky to get a minifigure inside without all the legs collapsing but once inside there is plenty of room for hammerhead and we can even, I think, shut the canopy. Yes, there we are, plenty of space. So that was the super cool flying jelly sub but before we wrap up, let's take a look at those minifigures. Here's the full lineup. From left to right we've got Jay, Takuma, Hammerhead and Jelly. This is Jay and he is not an exclusive to this set. We also see him in the Lightning Jet, Destiny's Bounty and Ninjago City in the same uniform. He's carrying this spiked flail as his weapon. If we take that out of the way we can have a look at the printing. He's wearing his blue Ninjago uniform and he's got a strap around his shoulder here with some pouches on there, a little bit of printing on the legs. And around the back you can see the uh, dojo logo and some more of that strap. Now he has the two-piece headgear which is dual molded. So we can see we've got the uh, tied headband around the back there. And a little bit of printing on the top. If we take that off we can reveal his expression. A very nicely printed face there. You can make out his freckles which is very cool. Uh, kind of concerned expression there. And if we turn him around he's got a, a little wry smile. And that is... Not the exclusive, but uh, a very nicely printed J. This is the terrific Takuma, and he's only got one expression, which is a perpetual state of fear. <laughs> I really like this character. Love that expression on the face, and it's some really nice printing too. He's wearing a kind of a traditional Japanese worker's uniform, I guess. I've uh, got some printing on the feet there for the sandals, and uh, really nice quality of printing, even though it's printed onto those brown legs. No printing on the back of the legs, but we do have a little detail on the back of the torso. And this hairpiece is also really, really nice. I like that traditional Japanese style there with the, uh, the bun in the back. And that is the magnificent Takuma. 
Next up we've got Hammerhead from the Shark Army, and I jumped the gun a little bit earlier saying this guy was not an exclusive, but in fact he is, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So we actually have three different Hammerheads in the Ninjago movie sets. The one on the left is from Kai's Fire Mech, and you'll notice he's got large knee plates. The one in the middle is the Hammerhead we get with Flying Jelly Sub, and the one on the right came from the Garmadon 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 set. And if we remove the helmets you can see the faces more clearly which reveals that they're all different. Although when I show you all three jelly characters in a moment you might recognise one of their faces being reused. Back to the hammerhead we get with the flying jelly sub and he is different in three distinct ways. Firstly we've got a different weapon, we've got this fish blade rather than the fish hammer. Then we've got, um, let's have a look, we've got the legs there which are different to the other hammerheads and finally the helmets are exactly the same, but we do have a different expression underneath as you saw a moment ago. Apart from that, everything is the same. We've got the nice metallic printing there on the torso, which is identical for all three. And really quickly, we'll have a look at the back. We've got some more great metallic printing on the back there. So this is a really nice minifigure. And uh, yeah, LEGO have done a really nice job of making these a little bit distinctive. So you can't just get one of them and call it a job. That is Hammerhead. Here are the three jellies and the one you see on the left is the one that came with Flying Jelly Sub. The jelly in the middle comes from Kai's Fire Mech and the jelly on the right comes from Jay's Lightning Jet. With faces exposed you can see that jelly from the Flying Jelly Sub has a different face. The two jellies on the right are easy to tell apart, one has larger knee pads on the legs and if we turn the middle one from Kai's Fire Mech around you're going to see a stud on the back. So here's the jelly we got in this set and as you can see his weapon of choice is a fish spear which is a, an interesting choice to say the least. His torso is the same as the other two jellies, got some nice metallic printing there and I really like the way the tentacles come down from the head and down over jelly's torso. Got some similar printing on the back there with uh, really nice metallics and a little bit of printing on the legs. Uh, one of the other jellies has the same legs, uh, they don't all have different legs. And then we've got this fantastic see-through headpiece here which simply pops off like that. It does feel like this could become brittle over time and uh, maybe crack but for now it's a very nice thing and uh, yeah he has a different expression to the other two jellies, a very uh, kind of mean and gnarly expression and that is the very cool jelly. So that was set number 70610, the magnificent flying jelly sub from the Ninjago movie. I've got to say I really kind of like this set and I wish I'd gotten around to reviewing it sooner. With four minifigures and two builds I think it's good value for money at the $30 price tag. And I really really do like the flying jelly sub, although the legs and the tentacles drive me crazy. It's just so difficult to pose the thing. The minifigure selection was a little bit predictable. I don't think I really needed any more shark army people. Jay was great but we've seen him in other sets and the exclusive Takuma was just a little bit too generic for me. Not to say that I don't like Takuma, I think he's a great minifigure, it's just that he's not one of the main characters from the film. Takuma's boat was a nice build and overall I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. So if you're looking to buy one of the more inexpensive Ninjago movie sets, this is definitely worth considering. Once again I want to thank Kenneth and Dylan for suggesting this set and if there's something you really want to see me cover, feel free to suggest it in the comments below. I'm not making any promises but it's always great to hear what you guys are interested in seeing. I really do hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below. And if you didn't, it's a miracle you got this far through the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Thanks a million for checking out my channel and I'll see you on the next build video.